so, for two years I worked for a commercial cleaning company. My regular job was cleaning a professional building downtown. You know, one of those office buildings that's all oral surgeons and gynecologists. There were two security guards on shift every night. One sat in the lobby, kept an eye on it, and the other one watched the monitors in a room in the basement. I knew one of the regular guys, Doug, pretty well. When he was watching the monitors, he used to watch me on screen. If I was cleaning one of the offices, he'd look it up in the building directory and call. Sometimes to chat, but more often he'd do it to fuck around. Pretend to be a serial killer, or something. It was dumb, but it was a pretty boring job. Anyway so I'm cleaning this really tacky oral surgeon's reflective black flooring, fake gold laid in the walls, and that really lame fake marble paint effect. I'm wiping down the chairs in the waiting area, when all of a sudden one of the phones starts to ring. I pick it up, and there's a lot of heavy breathing. Panting, almost, and this sort of slurping sound like someone sucking through their teeth. So I assume it's Doug thinking he's being funny. I hang up. But when I go down to the lobby on my way out, he's on his way in. He wasn't working that shift. I guess it could have been one of the guys who was on, but I've always assumed it was someone calling from outside. Probably just a prank call though. That's not really the end of it. See, a few months later I'm down in the basement with Doug, watching the monitors and smoking. They cycle through different cameras on different floors, only holding for a few seconds on each. So one of the monitors switches to a camera in that same office, and I swear to God, a cabinet opens, and someone small, maybe a kid or a midget, climbs out and walks in the direction of the door. Doug tells me to wait down there while he goes up to look. So he heads out, and I immediately lock the door. He doesn't come back down until almost the end of his shift, and refuses to tell me what happened other than to say that it's dealt with. Kind of like mine. Be eight and home by myself. Grandma is out on a date. Watching Pokemon in the living room. Hear a tapping on the window. Look through the window and see a man. Back the fuck up. He breaks the window. I drop my Pokemon cards I was holding and nope the fuck out. Run as fast as I can to my great grandpa's house four houses down from ours. Tell him what happened. He calls the police and we go back. The man is gone. Police find something among all the cards I dropped. Hand it to my great grandpa. He begins to tear up a bit and hugs me. Grandma finally comes home and we tell her. Great grandpa show her what the police found. She turns pale and hugs me tightly. The next day she replaced the window and has them put special latches on them and the doors as well. Few years pass and I finally work up the courage to ask what they found. Grandma shows me. It's a picture from the inside of my closet at night, you can see me sleeping in the photo. The date is from two days before he broke the window. Here's a story that I've never shared before. It's not really paranormal, but it scares the living shit out of me. 17 years old, been smoking weed regularly with a couple of guys from college, I'm from the UK, we start college at 16, for a year now. One of the guys usually drives and we smoke up in this field that's deserted at night. Driver gets a call from someone. He starts freaking out, literally laying on the floor screaming down the phone. Never heard screaming like that before, it was fucking terrifying. He's not even making sense, he's like writhing around on the floor and screaming down the phone. Starts doing this weird fucking laughing, all bug-eyed and weird. Calmly puts his phone in his pocket. Climbs very tall fence for a tennis court. Jumps off, lands on his neck and fucking kills himself. Guy I hung around with every day for a year just ups and kills himself because of a phone call and none of us know who it was on the other end. I wish I was making this up, but it fucked me up for a while afterwards. The other guy we were with started using ketamine regularly. We're both 21 now and he's completely screwed in the head. I was on medication for a while afterwards, shitty Cytolopram, but came off it quickly. The police put it down to a stoned idiot climbing the fence, they interviewed us both once and that was it. I never even heard from his family, they moved out of the county pretty quickly. I still have his younger brother on Facebook. I buried the memory somewhere in my brain and just try to ignore it, but whenever my phone rings and I don't have the number saved then I always get a horrible feeling and I never answer. I'm not even explaining how fucking weird this guy was acting when he answered his phone, it was horrible. 
the fucking noises he was making were so fucking disgusting. I can't even try to explain it because it makes me feel physically sick. Little brother is really into astronomy. He's about seven years old. Likes to look at the stars and watch things. About three weeks ago he spent literally the entire night looking at one part of space from his room. Never once moved. Didn't even eat. When he gets up about noon the next day I asked him what he was looking at. I was looking at the screaming stars. What are you talking about you little brat? There's a place I found where, if you look at it, you can hear screaming. No way. No prove it to you. Wait until about 11 at night. Telescope hasn't moved since the other night. Look into it. Hear very faint screams. Eventually gets louder. Have to look away. I noped out and told our mom that she should take away his telescope. I'm never going to look at the stars the same way again. This is a true story, so sorry if it's not exciting enough. This is about something me and my brother call the radio man. My grandparents lived down in this big lake community in Florida, and my family would go visit them during breaks. Anyway, my brother and I would always just go out and explore the woods and shit. They always warned us about snakes and alligators and shit, but they knew and trusted all the people who lived there. So one day, we're just clambering through the swamp trees, and we hear someone talking over and through some trees, so we go to investigate. There was a man in a big coat hunched over in a clearing, talking to himself. But he talked funny. His voice kept jumping to different inflections and accents as he talked. When we talked about it later, my brother said it reminded him of when you scan through a bunch of radio stations and only get a few words from each, almost like a big weird sentence. Hence the name, Radio Man. The guy heard us or something, because he turned and looked right at us. And he was all fucked up. The best way I can describe his face is a lizard face that got put through a blender. And he started walking towards us and saying hello 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 in his creepy ass voice. And we just fucking booked it. We were far as fuck from home, so we just ran together for like 5 or 10 minutes and then hid in a big bush that you couldn't see through. But even though we hid, we were excited and scared and were basically yelling to each other like idiots saying shit like what was that. We were only in the bush for like a minute before it happened. The thing started fucking climbing into the bush with us. It wasn't even saying anything, it was just like softly moaning and grunting with the same weird fucking voice. We shit ourselves and started screaming and both just shot out of the bush and literally ran as fast as we could all the way back home. Our grandparents and parents to this day they think we're full of shit. Looking back on it, it was probably some sort of deformed retarded guy who didn't know any better. My brother suggested once that maybe it was a guy who got shot in the face and it fucked up his brain, which would make sense. But who fucking knows right? It was still fucking horrifying. We never went adventuring in those woods ever again. I still wouldn't. Fuck that shit. Used to live in a busy apartment complex in Sao Paulo. It's not like American apartments, it's literally 40 stories, with each floor having about 25 apartments. Mostly college-aged people or young adults with family. I go to work after school on Fridays so I come home really late, around 1 a.m. every Friday. I live on the 11th floor so I ring the elevator. The elevator comes eventually makes its way down and the door opens, I walk in. The elevator traffic is usually busy at night anyway so I didn't mind the man who was in the elevator dressed to conceal himself. He had donned a ski mask and had black gloves. It's just him and I. As we are going up I notice he has a knife in his hand that is dripping what looks like blood. There's a small puddle by his side. I ignore this out of fear and quickly exit the elevator once my floor was reached and quickly go into my place and lock the door. The news reveals a murder occurred that day. I didn't directly go to the police as investigations are inconvenient in Brazil, and I can't miss work days. A police officer comes and knocks on my door the following Tuesday and asks if I've seen anything to help the investigation. I tell him no, I didn't see anything. He thanks me for my time and takes off. A week later they televise the suspect has been caught. It's the police officer. I have a story that my father told me. It happened to him when I was a high schooler. Be my father. Live in two-story house. Bedrooms are upstairs, living room, kitchen, and computer room are downstairs. 
nice neighborhood, but had some unexplained thefts, nothing serious. Sleeping peacefully, when something wakes you up. Look at clock, it's 3 a.m. Suddenly, stairs creak. Wooden stairs, they creak underweight. Hear it again, just a second, like someone walks step by step or something low weight. Dogs and cats are definitely outside. At this point eyes are open and listening. See a flash of light coming from the stairs, doors have glass parts. Hear the creaking again, then one more flash. Finally decides to check it out, can't go back to sleep anyway. Go out of the door, try to reach for the light switch when suddenly a creak. Glance toward stairs in reflex. See something humanoid on all fours, limbs all twisted, one hand grasping a step, holding something in the other. Lock eyes for a second, frozen in fear. When the thing slightly moves, jump back into room. Run around like a madman, looking for anything that can be used as a weapon. Nothing there, picks up a fucking chair. Storms out, ready to pummel even a tank with the chair. Except there is nothing. Mom is up too at this point, check the house as quiet as possible, so the kids won't wake up. Find nothing, even with lights on. Go back to sleep. He told me next day, asked if I heard anything. I said I didn't, and maybe he just had a nightmare, since mom didn't hear or saw anything. The truth is, I did hear and see everything. You know, I had a curfew at 10 p.m., but my parents went to bed before that, so I played some game and finished at 3 a.m. I used my phone as a light source, only when needed. And went on all fours, because I thought distributing the weight might ease down the creaking. I thought I will die when dad looked at me, but when he went back, I bolted back to my room and pretended I was asleep.